other lovely people. Um, really great to be uh, connecting in with you this Friday morning. We just want to say that we really miss all you guys and we really miss being able to gather um, together. But um, for the meantime, um, hearing from Jacinda that we'll head into level three next week. We recognise that this doesn't actually change a lot of things for um, our gathering space, that we'll still only be able to connect through the live stream um, videos on Sunday mornings. Um, but we will keep you updated um, with what our plans are as we move forward. Um, we just want to say a huge thank you to our pastoral team, our network of people that we've got ringing people in the parish on a regular basis. Um, we, the feedback that we've been getting from our callers is that you're all doing pretty well despite the circumstances. Um, totally understanding that there are challenges and difficulties, but the general vibe is that our people are doing pretty well. If you're not receiving a call and would value that, please do contact um, Louise or us. Uh, just a few other things. Um, as of this week, we've been, we're really conscious at this time um, of wanting to be doing our discipleship journey and being intentional about that because it, it can be easy to disengage when you're not connecting um, as the body of Christ as we normally would. So every weekday, um, someone from the leadership team is doing a short video clip um, sharing how they're at and a short reflection from scripture. would really encourage you to um, be looking at these. You can access them on our YouTube page and, off, and on our Facebook page. Uh, we've, uh, Billy and I have been spending some time thinking this week about the um, expanse of lockdown and this uh, a global effect. We've been sort of feeling that in our, in our bodies and in our um, uh, conversations. Our, our kids are picking up on that a lot. I'm sure they are in all um, the circumstances that you're living in. Um, and we're, and we're, we've been realising that the, the lockdown you know, affects this globe um, biologically um, and it also affects it um, uh, socially um, in the way we can't gather. And we're really missing that. But also um, it's having a large impact financially. Um, uh, uh, economically, there's lots of conversations going on um, in politics and, and across the world. Um, but, but on a grassroots and a ground level, there'll be likely that some members of our parish or at least friends and family and neighbours um, will lose jobs during this time um, and we are kind of holding that in our thoughts and our prayers at the moment our bubble is praying for that um, each day and we're conscious of the anxieties that people may be having about the the potential of this um, or whether this has already happened um, and so we're really mindful of that this time and yeah we encourage you to pray um, during this season particularly for those who are making large um, uh, corporate decisions, but also for those who are journeying um, on the ground level, wondering whether they're going to be able to make ends meet in this season. So let's keep those um, in our mind. Um, I'll come back to that again in a minute, but I also wanted to touch on something that um, uh, Anna Fletcher uh, reflected on yesterday in her daily reflection, which you can see on YouTube. She talked about um, how... Uh, when we're joining in and worship on a screen, it's actually quite easy for us to disengage and just consume worship rather than participate in worship. And, uh, and that really struck a chord with Billy and I, and we, we recognise that um, we want to find ways for us all to be participating. And so we encourage you to, to sing along when, you, when you're joining in on Sundays or if you're joining in in your small group um, to really participate in, the, in those times, um, to be joining in in daily prayers, um, and, uh, and, you know, maybe perhaps after the Sunday service, um, give a phone call to someone and chat through the sermon or chat through something that you felt that God might be saying to you. Let's keep participating in this. But one of the other things that has um, uh, changed during this uh, season of, of worshipping differently is um, that a large portion of our um, church, uh, their participation in worship in their giving is restricted in this season. Um, so we have uh, um, a chunk of our parish who give, um, in essence, they pay as they go and they pay cash um, at, at the services they attend. Um, and then there are others who um, tithe um, and they do so, um, they want to physically do that with an envelope. Um, and we haven't been able to receive any of those during this season. And so going back to the financial implications, one of the financial implications that has hit as a, us as a parish is that um, half of our givers are, have been unable to give during this season. So about, about half of our givers give online, 
Um, and we'd encourage you, if, if you were able to, to jump on board online uh, and to do that, you can find the details on our pastoral letter on our website, um, uh, uh, etc. Um, but what we are hoping for is that when we move into level three next week, this um, gives us an opportunity for people who may be um, traveling to the supermarket um, to just swing by the office. Um, and we'd really appreciate it if you could drop in your envelopes to the letterbox um, there. Um, each day someone will go in and empty the letterbox. Um, uh, but um, we, at this moment, um, uh, after five Sundays that we've missed, we're $14,000 um, under our, um, where we were budgeting to be. Um, and that's a significant situation that we're in. Um, and we recognise God's abundance and we recognise that this is just part of parcel of what's been going on. But um, if you were, if you are one of our regular givers and you feel compelled to do so, um, we'd love to encourage you to either sign up online or to bring your envelopes into the office at this time. We know it's an awkward thing to talk about, but uh, um, but it's uh, one of the things that uh, that this lockdown is causing. I just want to read to you from the Psalms. Um, Psalm 23 is mine and Caleb's favourite psalm, and we recite it most mornings. Um, and I just want to take us through it, and I just have a few reflections for us um, as a parish this morning. <clears throat> so Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. I just want to pause there for a moment. There's a real sense at the moment with this pandemic that we are in a dark valley, that we are in a global shutdown. Um, and <laughs> the sense of evilness is coming out in, um, in this virus um, and the fact that there are so many places in this globe in shanty towns and um, in slums where there'll be figures that we just don't even know about. This is a really difficult time globally um, and also just this um, spirit of fear and anxiety that is um, fluctuating in its grip on us as a people. So it's, um, this really is a global time of us walking through a dark valley. But even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I just love that image. The sense that he is preparing this banquet table before us in the presence of what? are our enemies and our enemies will be different things it might be the enemy of anxiety that is just so rampant in your in your headspace um it might be the enemy of loneliness of depression there'll be so many different things that feel like they're pushing in on us at this time but even in that place he prepares a table for us mm -hmm. and he anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows I love that image of the, of the overflowing cup. And I often imagine oil being poured into the cup just continuously, 24-7. It's like overflowing in the presence of whatever it is that we are, um, we are going through in life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not just some of the days, but all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And the really beautiful thing about this psalm that I um, that I often fall back on is the truth of the narrative that is throughout this psalm is that it is God that is doing the work in us. And I just want to go over some of these phrases. He makes me lie down in green pastures. It is him that leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths. He is the one that is with me. He is the one comforting me. He is the one preparing the table before me. He is the one that anoints my head with oil. It is him doing this good work in us. There's one final image that Billy and I, I wanted to share. It was uh, uh, something that um, struck us a while back. Um, you know, we, we think on this uh, song almost every day. And... Um, and there's the uh, image of uh, 
this soul restorer who's who's leading this shepherd who's leading this sheep and it says he leads me beside uh, in green pastures he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters and the thought that we um, had was uh, what type of sheep lies down in green pastures and what type of sheep lies still beside still waters it's one that doesn't need to eat and doesn't need to drink because everything has been provided for mm. and it trusts that the next meal's coming too it doesn't need to overeat or hoard or protect itself mm. oh to be like that sheep mm. oh to be in a place where we trust that god has got everything mm. that he will provide all that we need mm. in super abundance mm. we're going to close now um by singing a version of psalm 23 we hope this blesses you and we pray it as a blessing over you at this time.